Hello and welcome to another Tecla Structures video. In today's presentation, we will cover the wall layout tool specifically for the precasters. The wall layout tool is an excellent component to help aid in your modeling workflow. This tool can significantly reduce your modeling time. Tecla User Assistance describes the tool as the following. Wall layout tool is a set of components that you can use for creating and modifying all common types of concrete walls, such as solid precast panels, from single layers to double walls, sandwich walls, and different wall structures that are cast on site. The wall structure may contain several layers, for example, structural layers, insulation, void space, or surface treatments. You can use direct modification to flexibly change the wall geometry, layer offsets, openings, and seam lines. If at any point during this video you get stuck or want to learn more about the wall layout tool, please visit the link on the bottom of your screen. Let's jump into the model. All right, here we are in a brand new Tecla Structures model. Now there's a few ways that you can access the wall layout tool. The first way is to come to your applications and components. It's like precast detailing, and then simply come down to the wall layout tool. Another way, and probably an easier way, is to come up here to the concrete tab and click the down arrow from panel, and then click wall layout. Once this command is activated, you'll notice the typical crosshairs and the instructions on the bottom saying to pick two or more points uh, for the wall line. So if we click first point, you'll notice that we have this direct modification on, and you'll notice the wall is following us around here if we select another point. Now you can continue on. If you come to the contextual toolbar, you can create an open line of wall. So for example, one that doesn't actually close. Or if you come up here and select this one, create a closed line, you'll see that it'll always want to close that structure. Pressing middle mouse will end the command, and then you have your wall. For today's presentation, we'll start off with just a simple wall. You can also do this in 3D as shown here, and middle mouse. What we're gonna focus on first is the actual component dialog. Inside the custom component, we have a layer type system here where you can simply click the green plus to add layers and you'll see it'll continuously add the layers here in the visual section and you can press the red X to delete any layers out. We also have some saved in presets. If you have just like a 10 inch solid wall, 12 inch, 8 inch, we also have some sandwich panels and then some some other cast in place walls here as well. Let's take a look at a sandwich panel. Let's just choose the sandwich panel 12, 336. So it's going to create a three inch outside width, a three inch insulation, and then a six inch inside width. So looking at the sandwich panel here, if we just press modify, you'll notice we have our sandwich panel wall type there. The first category here is the height, which is, as you can see here, is 12 feet and the total thickness is set to one foot. Now this one foot is the total wall thickness for your wall group, not to be confused with the individual layer thickness, which we'll get into next. Here you can set the cast unit name, any prefixes and start numbers. This section here is for the position. So if we zoom in a little closer here, the first one is the in, in plane position. So you'll, you'll notice right now, we are extending negative x past our, our pick point. If we change it to, let's say, this guy, you'll notice now we're in the middle. And then lastly, you can go to the positive x. So just through this dialog, and you can also create offsets here too. So if you want it to be positive x, and then you know plus another six inches, you can set that there as well. Now the depth is uh, obviously the Z orientation. You have a couple more drop downs here, whether or not you wanna go to the bottom, mid, or extrude negative. Same concepts there. So in depth, just to showcase this, if we set it to 12 inches and press modify, this one is with it set at the middle. If we did this one, positive up, you'll see we have a nice 12 inch gap down at the bottom. So typical for precasters, uh, this would be set to like a, like a one inch erection gap down at, at the bottom. So that's what we'll do for this presentation. The next tab we have is the layer tab. So this is where you can actually cycle through these 
by selecting them on the left hand layer selection here and you'll cycle through them this is where you can change all the different properties as far as the the name now this layer name it's, it's important that that is just visually here this is not reported upon in any drawings or reports or anything like that this is simply for the the tool tools purpose down here it is though so this is where you can set your your layer thickness your part name your class material and all of that now on the top we have a couple of very important tabs such as is it part of the structure is it insulation void you know fill space you can actually actually create the surface treatments in here as well so you'll notice the insulation is set to insulation and the layer elementation this will actually create its own individual parts here so if i switch my selection filter you'll notice these are actually three separate tecla parts so that's what that yes is doing and then adding to the cast unit pretty self-explanatory it's adding you know these these two wythes to the to the main wythe cast unit And that's basically it for the layer tab. So if we go to the vertical offsets, now we can dictate if we want to hold any of these down in any way. And you can simply select on these visually here and we can just set, let's say six inch, press modify. You notice that one will drop. We'll just do a different one here just so you can visually see. What may be a little bit more common for precast applications is, let's say you, this is the roof level it may be more typical to hold this insulation back down to that roof level or maybe a you know, six or 12 inch solid zone. So you can hold that in insulation down and then you can either develop a custom component that you can add in here to add in that, that fill zone or you can just model in another you know, mini wall panel up here and then attach it to the cast unit. Both of those are fine modeling practices. Likewise on the bottom, this is where you can set any offsets here that you may have same way as you did on the top and last but not least we have the UDA tab this is a, a very important tab especially for those precasters that are exporting some data downstream maybe to an ERP system or maybe for reporting or maybe for some specific drawing templates or anything like that you can actually write out UDAs through this component the UDAs that you can write out are the comment user field one two three and four so just to showcase this, we'll just type in a couple erroneous things here. Press modify. And now if I just look at any one of these walls and inquire on the user defined attributes, you'll notice that our three fields are up there. It's also important to note that you can customize these UDAs to be whatever you'd like by using this material that's shown on the slides now. Okay, and that's going to do it for the custom component dialog. Let's jump into the model here and take a look at the contextual toolbar. So by default, I'll unpin this. By default, your contextual toolbar will follow you around as long as you have the direct modification turned on. So you see here's the contextual toolbar. So by selecting with your component filter on and your direct modification tool on, single click on your wall and your contextual toolbar will be there. I'm going to move mine up this way and then pin it to kind of keep it out of the way. We're just going to cycle through these and kind of dive into each of them in, uh, in a little bit more detail. So starting off, the, the one that's on and active by default is the Modify Wall Boundaries and Openings. So by default here, you'll notice that you can quickly click and drag up wall heights or widths. You can drag points individually to create slopes. If I had openings in here, you could simply move those openings around. Okay, the next tool we're going to talk about is the Modify Seams, which is a very powerful tool. By clicking on it, you'll notice that it'll open up the seam, it's the seam custom component. It's very important that you cycle through each of these by clicking and you can set different gaps based on whatever your standards are. Typical sandwich panel applications, you'll have a you know a continuous gap through here. So we'll set these to be three quarters of an inch. And then we can just come over here in the model and then just start single clicking and you'll notice that we're just dropping in seams wherever wherever you select. We close out of this, close this up. So now we have a bunch of individual panel elements here. All right, now the next tool that we will showcase is the Modify Wall Boundary Offsets. Now previously, inside the Wall Layout Custom Component dialog box, we set some offsets, such as the one-inch offset on the base. You can simply select on it, 
and type in a new offset. It's important to note though, if we go back into this, the offsets, that just did the inside width. So you need to cycle through here and make sure that all those are set. Okay, now the next tool that we will showcase is the add opening with two points. This is very useful, especially for doors. So you just click on two points, it adds it all the way through and through. Pretty self-explanatory. The next tool that we will showcase is the add rectangular opening. Just by selecting two points, we can add any kind of opening that we'd want. Next, we will show the add polygon opening. So just like it sounds, you can add any kind of crazy shaped opening you'd want. And then directly following that, we have a circular opening. Now what's nice about all these openings is these all have pick points here that we can change and modify these very easily. So we can simply grab on a handle and we can drag it around however we please. Or you can come and add a new point here in the middle, which will then open up more midpoints throughout these. So these are all very easily customizable and changeable. For things like the circular opening, you can just simply click on here, type in a new radius, and press enter, and you're done. And that's really going to sum it up for the wall layout tool. Definitely be sure to check out inside the precast detailing layout tools. Be sure to check out some of the out-of-the-box components, such as the wall layout connector, wall layout elementation, wall layout swapper, wall layout opening, wall layout seam, and then wall layout T-connector. That's going to wrap it up for this presentation. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Thank you for watching.